It's often easier to figure out what the parameter is after you figure out what the sample and the statistic are. So let's jump to the sample. The sample is the 3,278 U.S. adults who were surveyed. The statistic is the proportion of the 3,278 surveyed adults who demonstrated they could interpret a scatter plot correctly. In this case, it was 63%. Now let's jump back up to the parameter. The parameter is like the statistic, but it's going to be the true proportion for all the U.S. adults who can interpret a scatter plot correctly. Population, parameter, both start with P. Also, sample and statistic both start with S. We're going to use the four-step solving process. So first, let's state the parameter we're trying to estimate and at what confidence level. We would like to estimate with 90% confidence the true proportion of U.S. adults who can interpret a scatter plot correctly. Next, we need a plan. In the plan, we need to list our inference method as well as our conditions. If conditions are met, we will use a one sample Z interval for P. That's our inference method. It says in the stem of the problem that the survey was of randomly selected U.S. adults, so that condition's met. Now we need to check the normal condition. We need to make sure that in our sample, we have at least 10 adults who can interpret a scatter plot correctly, so that's NP needs to be greater than or equal to 10, and we need at least 10 adults who cannot interpret a scatter plot correctly. That's NQ needs to be greater than or equal to 10. Both of those check out, so the normal condition is met. Next, we need to check the independent condition. Since the sample was taken without replacement, we need to check the 10% condition. There are far more than 32,780 U.S. adults, so the 10% condition is met. Now we're ready to actually construct the confidence interval. The confidence interval is going to be p hat plus or minus z star times the square root of p hat q hat over n. We need to figure out what z star is. That's the critical value. Since we're doing normal calculations, we have to figure out how far from the mean we have to go to cut off the middle 90% of the normal distribution. If 90% is the middle, then each of the tails would have 5% in them. To do this, we can use the inverse norm function on the calculator. The way the function works is it tells you what z-score would cut off the area to the left of the value you input. So, if we want to figure out the negative z-score over here, we could do inverse norm 0.05. That will tell us what cuts off the lower 5% of the normal distribution. To figure out the positive critical value, we'd have to use inverse norm 0.95. That's because 95% of the area of the normal distribution is to the left of this value. To do this on the calculator, press second vars. That gets you to the distribution menu. Go down to inverse norm and input the area of 0.05. Leave the mean and standard deviation as 0 and 1. There's the negative critical value. We can do this again using 0.95 to get the positive critical value. So our critical value for a 90% confidence interval is approximately 1.645. Now let's build our confidence interval. We're going to take our point estimate of 0.63 and add and subtract the margin of error. The margin of error is composed of the critical value times our standard error. In this case, our margin of error is 0 0.01387. If we store this value of x, we can easily add and subtract it from 0.63 to make our interval. So our interval is 0.6161 to 0.6439. Always round the lower limit of the interval down and the upper limit up. We actually don't have to do this by hand. We can calculate it very quickly on the calculator. Press the STAT button and go over to the TEST menu. Near the bottom, option A on this calculator, is one prop Z interval. For X, we need to tell it how many people in our sample demonstrated they could interpret a scatter plot correctly. So we'll do 3,278 times 0.63. For n, 
let's type the sample size, 3,278. And for sea level, put 0.9 for a 90% confidence level. Now we're getting a domain error. Let's go back and see what happened. For x, our value wasn't an integer. 63% times 3,278 ended up being 2,065.14. That's impossible. We can't have 2,065.14 people in our sample who could interpret a scatter plot correctly. So this is probably due to rounding when they reported the results of their survey. Let's change it to 2,065, which seems like the likely value. Now, when we go down to calculate, we get our confidence interval. Now we're ready to conclude. We are 90% confident that the interval from 0.6161 to 0.6439 contains the true proportion of US adults who can interpret a scatter plot correctly. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.